Hi everyone, I'm Miss Milliken, a Year 5 teacher at Bluecoat Junior School and today, with some help from my glamorous little furry assistant, I am going to be showing you how to make a fabulous little dinosaur family. So, firstly, to introduce you to the dinosaur family and my helper. So this is the dinosaur family and this is Sticks the kitten who has very recently joined our family and keeps climbing up onto the table because she doesn't want to be on her own. So she will probably come in and play with the dinosaurs while I'm trying to do them. So we're going to be creating a dinosaur um, collection, which doesn't have to be di uh, accurate, as you can see from our purple and yellow dinosaur and our dinosaur with spots on, it doesn't have to be perfect. <laughs> they can, they make wonderful cat toys. So, the, stay there. the dinosaurs um, that we're creating are brontosauruses, which are these ones with the long neck. So I've made an adult one and a little one, and um, triceratops as well, which are two of my favourite types of dinosaurs and happen to be really easy ones to make when um, using some really simple household things. So the first thing you're going to need is a kitchen roll tube or and, or depending on how many you want to make, some toilet roll tubes. So I'm going to show you how to make this complete little family and then show you how to decorate them and make them um, nice and pretty and interesting. And you can come up with whatever designs you want and then send the pictures to your year group email at Bluecoat. You're also going to need, and you might need some adult help, you're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need either a pen or pencil. You can then use either coloring pens pencil colours, um, paints, I'm going to use paint because it's the quickest one for painting over them, but you could use paint, you can use anything you want to decorate them, so the more um, out there that you go, the more interesting your dinosaurs are going to look. So, let's start with the baby Brontosaurus, because I think it's really cute. So the first thing that you're going to need, and luckily Styx has gone to sleep, so hopefully she won't be taking part in any more videos, is a toilet roll tube. Now, we're going to squish it down so that it goes flat, like this, and then we're going to draw on the right shape. So, for the baby brontosaurus, we are going to draw a line that comes out a bit like this, and we can trim this down once it's all done, so if it's not perfect, don't worry, and then a line going down, and then it comes in, and over for the hump on its back and then goes up to a point for its tail about the same height as its head. For the legs we have to draw going in and down and then a half sort of rectangle in the middle which is a bit longer because we need to have that gap between its front leg and its back leg and then another square at the back. So what we're going to do now is cut this out nice and carefully. So we cut all the way around and down here. And this is where you might need an adult to help you because it can be quite tricky to get your cutting perfect. But it's really good for your motor skills if you've got child safe scissors and an adult supervising you that you have a go if you feel like you're able oh there we go cut off the tail it's going a bit long there and down here like this across and down so now we have this sort of shape cut out. The next thing that we're going to do is, oops, put my scissors away safely, open it up and just like that we've started our dinosaur shape. So you can see this one's even a little bit smaller than the other one. And then we bend where the head's going to be, just bend it at the top, we fold to get its face. There we go, it's got quite a that little face flat face but you can trim it if you want it to be a bit more round you can do so and then for the tail we just trim um, no we don't we just fold sorry not trimming 
we just fold at the base of the tail so that it comes out like this. And there we go, we've got one little bronchosaurus ready to go. So I'll put him there and we'll move on to our triceratops. So again, I've got another toilet roll. I'm going to squish it. Let's get the triceratops into view so that we can see how it all works. Now, this is made up of two different pieces. So we're going to start with the body shape because we have to create the head and then put it on. So to start with the body, we are going to do something similar for the legs as we did for the brontosaurus, so like so. A half square in the middle. And another one at the base, at the back, so here we go. Now, this bit's quite important. You need to draw a line going in quite high up and then a pair of horns. Then we go down like so. So we've made the horns coming out. And now we go over, create the bump. Um, we'll create our triceratops' tail, which comes up like this. So, once again, carefully cutting out. So I cut along, up, and then down. like so. Then we're going to cut out in between the front and the back legs and down and there we go. So now we have this sort of shape so we can open it up and that's going to be the start of our triceratops. Now we've saved this part so that we can create the triceratops head. The heads are really easy to do. You just draw a sort of light bulb shape. Like so. And then we're going to cut it out. So I'm going to trim it off because I don't need two triceratops head, heads for one triceratops. But if you were going to make more than one, you could just cut both pieces at once. And then you'd have matching heads because you could make a whole herd of dinosaurs if you wanted to. And just like that, we've got our triceratops head. So this is the bit that can also be a bit tricky. So best to have an adult with us for this. We can bend the tail, fold it along at the base to give it its little tail. This one's a better tail than the one I did. My first one had a very long tail. We bend it. And then we bend the whole front part out like so, like this. So it looks like the horns are pointing down to the table. And then what we're going to do is we are going to bend the horns upright. Like this. So you have to bend a bit further back. You can't just bend them up like this or you'll have triceratops with the horns pointing in the wrong direction. So they have to go up towards the side. So bend along and if you look, they can cross over and you create this sort of shape where you've done the bending. Okay, next tricky bit. Your triceratops head needs to be attached to your triceratops body. So what you do is you find roughly halfway down, fold it in half, and then using your scissors, you find where you think it You could use a pen to help you, so I know that I need to go so like this. And then I'm going to cut, being careful not to cut all the way so that I end up with it cut in half, down, and I cut down again. And it doesn't matter if these are quite big because you want to create, when you 
push down. You want a sort of hole, if you look, you can see like this, a hole in the top that you can put the horns through. So this is where we check that it fits before we paint it. So we put one horn up through the hole and the other horn up through the hole as the other hole. Oh, it can be a bit tricky. There we go. You can always make them sharper horns after you've done your painting. And just like that, you have your triceratops all ready to be painted. So before we paint them, we'll take off the head again carefully so we don't rip the horns off because it can be quite tricky given that it's just cardboard. We'll take them off so that we can paint because the horns are a different colour to the body. And then finally, we'll look at making our grown up Brachiosaurus. Now, I saw these and I thought they were really cute because then you can make a little family. So, fold it down. So, if you and your adults maybe have a go at making them, maybe they could make an adult Brachiosaurus. Brontosaurus, sorry, not a Brachiosaurus. They have smaller necks. So, we are going to draw again, just like we did with the baby one. We're going to draw down for the head. Now, you can make these as big as you want, so let's make it really big. So, I draw all the way down. And then I'm going to put a bump for the back. And I'll draw almost all the way back up because they have very long tails as well and then the same steps for the body so I've made the body a little bit bigger and I'm making the legs a bit bigger because it's a grown up one here we go so now we're going to cut it out remembering to be very careful with the scissors And there's lots of other things you can do with these um, kitchen rolls and toilet rolls as well. So keep saving them at the moment because I've seen you can make zoo animals out of them. You can make crocodiles. You can do loads and loads of things with these. And there's something that generally is always around the house because they're things that are always getting used up. So really handy. So if you're into gardening and you do gardening, you might have seen them be used for um, people use them. Uh, to help with plant pots and things and they can make leeks grow straight in them all those sorts of things so they're really really useful if you and your grown-ups are looking at doing some projects while we're in lockdown away from school so here we go oh my goodness it's so tall I'm gonna have to move the camera and it's still not all the way in so I'll have to bend it so we fold him out let's do the tail first put the tail down there we go, this one's even bigger than the adult one I did before. And then, right up here at the top of the head, we're going to fold it, just like we did with the baby one. And look at that, now I have a humongous family. It's like the good dinosaur, isn't it, but with dotty dinosaurs instead. So now I've got a whole collection. Maybe you could do the last one as well, maybe you could make Arlo. So go with it and create your own good dinosaur set. So what we're going to do now is decorate these. You can either colour them in with pens or pencils, as I've said, or you can use paints if you have some paints around. Um, paints are good, but the only thing is they can get really messy. So make sure that you have something protective on your table. First of all, so don't do it straight onto the table, no matter what you're using, because it can get really messy and then you can get in lots of trouble. I know I'd get in a lot of trouble if I covered the table in paint. So, first thing, you're going to paint all of them, or colour all of them, on the inside and on the outside. They can take a while, and they do get a bit messy when you're doing it, because if I were you, I'd do the outside, leave it to dry, then paint the inside, because otherwise you end up covered in paint. Trust me, I was covered in paint when I did these the other day. So make sure, and... We're going to do our um, 
our horns a different colour so that they stand out a bit and then we're going to put some patterns on this but I can show you how to do those afterwards. So first thing, cover them in paint or colouring and then do these parts a different colour if you have one so that it's not all the one colour, so the horns are a different colour. In fact, let's colour in the horns now if you can so that you know, so I'm just going to use uh, felt tips for this one. So I colour in one side, I'm going to colour in the other side. It's not perfect but it will do. Just to remind me that they're going to be a different colour to the rest of my dinosaur. And then I can get painting. So I will see you once these have dried and are painted lovely colours. Okay, so once those have dried and you've decorated, so I have created a blue dinosaur. I've got a yellowy colour baby one and I've painted my um, triceratops in sort of fiery colours. So then we have to put them back together again. So we need to make sure that we... You might have to pull that bit again and create the holes again because the paint could have closed them up if you used paint. And then you're going to just pop the horns back through like you did when you were checking that it worked. So pop the horns one through one through one side. One through the other side. Still tricky this bit. Always gets me. And just like that, once that's done, you have your triceratops. Now, the, oh, drop something. The next step is to put your tricer your faces on. So you need your felt tip, and you can draw some eyes and a nose or maybe a smile if you want to put some eyes on and a nose and on this one i put them under the horns eye eye nose and a little smile because i like the triceratops so i've used all fiery colors this and there you have it your little dinosaurs and you can go ahead and decorate them any way that you want. You could cover them in glitter, you could draw spots or stripes or anything on them. And now, if we look, I have a complete herd of all different herbivores. So, once you've done those, remember to email your um, pictures to your year group so ask parents or adults or grown-ups whoever you've got at home to take a picture of what you've created and then email it to your year group because I know that your teachers are really excited to see what you've managed to create and remember the more um, extravagant your dinosaur the better so I hope you've enjoyed making dinosaurs with me and Sticks, who is now eating her dinner <laughs> And I look forward to creating something again with you soon.